Yes guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. I'm actually gonna be very honest with you guys. I'm changing my style 110%. So normally, I obviously get the car, do some research, and then I tend to kind of script what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna go for more for first impressions going forward. And first impressions going forward, don't take this the wrong way, it was rubbish. I got this car and I was like, sure, it's a hot hatch, it's gonna be fun, but it was so crashy day to day. So then I decided, you know what, Tim, actually do some research. And this obviously is the Ford Focus ST 2.3 litre. And it has the track pack. So if you didn't know, standard the st comes with variable suspension so adaptive suspension but this has the track pack which makes it quite fun now by fun what i mean is that you can dial this suspension in anyhow you want let me break that down for you a bit more it's got kw suspension very similar to how bmw also provide a m performance suspension rebranded kw's you can adjust the height and the damping with a few knobs and a few twists and day to day that isn't something you're going to want to do I, I can't even see how you could do it in two minutes but if this is going to be your all round hot hatch weapon it's a very good start 100% and you get a few cracks and pops out the back as you would want on your hot hatch now if we press S mode on the steering wheel it goes back into our normal mode and everything's hunky dory and day to day it does what it says on the tin cruising around here six speed manual it's quiet it's relatively comfortable and again the reason why i wasn't too much of a fan when i first got it is because it was so crashy for day to day so how i would suggest it is day to day you'd want to find a soft setting that you can go over bumps in the city without having your your teeth or your gnashes falling out and then when you are going to a track day perhaps then tighten it up because I think this is kind of set up for track or roads like this where it's quite flowy and the car you want the car anyway to settle quite quickly and it definitely does hence why day to day it's not ideal but you're not buying an ST for its amazing comfort again press this magic S button into sports mode and you have got four modes you've got slippery which i think allows the car to move a tiny bit more in snowy conditions normal day-to-day -day, sport which is in now and racetrack and in sport it's very similar to racetrack however with racetrack which they say do not use on public roads it slackens off the traction control quite a lot in fact i think it goes all the way off and it allows you to do a couple of wheel spins but in sport it's more than enough <laughs> take my word for it so in terms of space it's a focus it's gonna be big enough outside of the car does it look big no it's surprisingly smaller than i expected back in the day the focus was forgive, forgive me ford quite an ugly bit of kit but now this thing definitely screams hot hatch and inside it's it's spacious it's comfortable and these seats bucket-esque seats yeah mate i'm just gonna give it that east london word yeah it's lovely mate it's lovely <laughs> but now a few people message when i put this up on instagram so make sure you follow me on instagram that i had it for a week what does it feel like compared to the i30 n bearing in mind i have driven the i20 n and I've not driven the i30 in for longer than, I don't know, a couple of hours, I did drive it on a track. And although I didn't drive it on the road, 
I would say they are very, very similar. The SD has an electrical LSD, so it does provide great grip on the front end, very similar to how the i30N does. But one thing I would say that probably could step this to the next level is having an individual mode. And for some people, that might not be much of a deal breaker, but for someone like me who likes to tinker and play around with the right settings, you would like to be able to adjust your steering feel and your throttle response individually. And to be honest, on track, the way the turbo is set up as well, I can't see you really having any issues. Something else that's quite cool is that it's got a launch control mode, meaning if you press OK and, I don't know, slam the accelerator, it holds its power and let go of the clutch, and it just goes. <laughs> And again, I'm not really gonna include a manual on a launch control test, simply because I don't think it's fair, because I might not be the best guy when it comes to shifting and when it's an automatic, which this is also available in, it's more the car, less the driver. So unfortunately, you just experienced it, but we're not gonna put any numbers down, just so that the ST boys don't come and try and I don't know, front wheel drive understeer into me. <laughs> and talking of understeer. I'm gonna be brutally honest and say that this hasn't given me any of those moments. And I know it's a very, I don't know, corny thing to say. Oh, that's why you buy a rear wheel drive, mate. You don't get understeer, you get oversteer. So it's a lot harder to control, but it's for the better drivers out there. I drive a rear wheel drive car. And of course I love it, of course it's fun, but at times you know you could just probably push through if you had a front wheel drive car at speeds that you wouldn't even dream of in a rear wheel drive car, no matter how well it's set up, simply because it's safer. And number two, it's quite, oh, don't shoot me down. It's a tad bit more fun. And I know that's not gonna be everybody's, I don't know, saying or agreement, in everybody's agreement, but there's something about having a manual hot hatch that you just can't beat. <laughs> so now, automatic or manual? Manual all day. Manual all day. I have this conversation quite a lot on some of my videos. I really think power is a big, a big factor. I recently drove an Alpine A110S and that was an automatic and don't get me wrong it was fun it was powerful it was quick very similar to how it came and flows along on the road but what i would say is that cars like this front wheel drive 280 below the 300 brake horsepower number having a manual way more engaging we're in sixth gear here and if i just dump it straight into fifth the torque builds up and we're off and it's not as quick as a DCT going through the gears, obviously. But knowing that you're in charge, into fourth, back into fifth, and sometimes you might wanna miss out a gear when you are going into that sharp corner and go from six into fourth. Not that you should, but if you can, do it. It's quite satisfying, and that is a strong reason as to why you want a manual. Driver engagement, and that satisfaction of just nailing the shift or skipping a few gears to coast along like a seasoned veteran. Now, something that is noticeable is that this manual is not noisy, but you can really hear it. And some people love that. Some people think it's lovely being able to go into gears and hearing that click and that clunk. However, I'm quite, when it comes to cars anyway, quite a paranoid person. What's that noise? Oh, stop, put the window down. Oh, you can't hear it. 10 seconds later, you hear it again. What's that noise? The gearbox at times, I'm not sure if it needs a bit of heat because this is probably the hardest I've sent this car in the seven days. It's noisy. It's a tad a bit clunky at times and that's not mechanically. It's just the sound, it does it, and it's never missed a gear, it's gone in when I've asked it to go in, easy now. But yeah, it definitely could do with, at lower speeds and that in comfort maybe, it could do with having 
a smoother transition. Oh, there goes that suspension I was talking to you about. And while we are touching on the gearbox, before I forget, something else it has is in manual, manual, stupid boy, in comfort, <laughs> in boring mode, I've noticed that it doesn't rev much for you, which I've noticed on a few other manual cars, which is quite weird. You kind of have to turn it on on the i20N I anyway, because um, in comfort mode, they don't want you to. And I know it's a racy thing to be able to make sure the engine speed matches, but it is quite lurchy when you're going down the gears. And in race and in sport, it does that. Not that I've used race on the road because no one would do that because traction's off and it just makes the car come alive. So overall, could I fault the Focus ST? Probably not. Other than one in 50 more brake horsepower, just to push it into the 320, 330 brake horsepower bracket, it's a great bit of kit. Six speed manual, you've got the nice pops and bangs out the back if you're into that sort of stuff. It doesn't scream boy racer. And for me, again and again, the biggest, biggest selling point for this is the fact that you get the height adjustable suspension as standard. That's the sort of stuff that usually invalidates your PCP modifying a car, but they've given you that as standard. So all you'd probably want is maybe a cheeky little splitter because the ride height currently is perfect for driving a car that's not yours. But when you are looking to make it a tad bit more sporty, it probably could do with a splitter. But don't tell him I said that. On the interior, I don't think we've touched too much on this, but it's a decent place to be. The sound system, I believe it's got the BNO sound system. It can't be beaten. This is definitely my cup of tea. So yes, guys, that has been the video on the Focus ST. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you rather have this or an i30N? What more do you think it needs? Do you feel the suspension isn't needed? I personally feel that this is one of the best hot hatches on the market currently, price-wise debatable but everything's up nowadays even snickers used to cost 30p it's 70p now so let's not get too hung over when it comes to price but overall it's a great piece of kit it must be said and if you have enjoyed this video please smash the thumbs up button subscribe if you're new to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one take care and god bless